Well, uh, we are still right here on the ground at Chitezi where the tragic landfill slide happened over the weekend. Uh, the death toll keeps rising. Apparently, we are in a, the most deplorable condition that you could describe with a very unbearable stench as uh, quite a number of desolate relatives of the dead uh, stand stranded and rescue efforts now look hampered by uh, the ongoing heavy showers. Uh, there are quite a number of questions that remain unanswered following this catastrophe. And uh, as we speak, the Lord Mayor has also made a non-spot visit to, to the place to establish the current situation on site. Lord Mayor, good to have you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, well, as the country comes to terms with the tragedy, does KCCA take liability? Allow me a portion the blame to both KCCA and the central government. But, and, and I will start with giving you the the background, the genesis of all this problem, so that we appreciate where we are coming from. And it's very important. This facility started way back in 1996 as a, just a dump site. And it was upgraded to an engineered facility in 2001. And it was meant to last for only 15 years from 2001. Meaning it was supposed to be decommissioned. It was supposed to be decommissioned by 2015. And it was at that time that drastic measures ought to have been taken to address the crisis, to stave off rather the crisis, the impending catastrophe. For us in KCC, we acted in earnest. We raised the red flag that Chitezi was full way back in 2015. And indeed, we took steps to buy a new site in Idundu. In 2016, 136 acres of land in Idundu in preparation for a new state-of-the-art or modern landfill at Idundu after decommissioning Chitez. Now, where does the challenge come from? No, Idundu was bought at 4.3 billion. Now, where does the challenge start from? Decommissioning Chitez required a whooping sum of 26 billion Uganda shillings because you wouldn't just abandon it and leave it the way it is right now lest it would also cause the calamity we have witnessed here. Mm. We commissioned the consultants to carry out a study, to conduct what we call the Asia Environment Impact Assessment Report. This is Messrs. Green, Messrs. Uh, Queenland and Leeds Engineering Consultants. That was way back in 1996 and rather 2016. They came up with a report in 2001 wherein they indicated that actually we needed to close down to decommission Chitez urgently. That was another red flag. I have a report I can share with you, Simon, and NBS. A report of the, the, those consultants. And they said how to close it down. It, was, it has scientific methods. They advised us to use what in, sci in, in scientific terms they call anaerobic digestion. Whereby you, you generate methane gas out of this garbage by using methods which do not involve uh, oxygen. That is oxidization without oxygen. And then you generate meth methanic gas from this garbage here to get rid of the mountains. 26 billion was required. It was not provided by government. So we got stuck. Secondly, to construct a new landfill at Idundu, we needed a whooping sum of 190 billion Uganda shillings, which up to now has been considered unavailable and it's a, an unfunded priority. It's a priority, but not, unf but not funded. And we got stuck with that. C going forward, we said, now what do we do under the circumstances? Let's generate a twist out of this. Again, we resorted now to development partners, getting investors from outside the country. They came from as far as Europe, America, and Asia, and the Arab countries. They came here, conducted a study. And they indicated that we can generate 60 megawatts from this garbage here. And that would go on the national grid. Where comes in the problem now? Or rather, where does the, the problem come from now? General M7 put in place a very unreasonable policy. Onerous condition that power generated from the garbage here would go onto the national grid at just a paltry sum of 5 cents. 5 cents. 
that the power purchase agreement would be signed would be for only five cents per megawatt. And this would, did not sound attractive to the investors. They felt it was not lucrative enough. One would not put in their massive investment here at just poultry sum. And in comparative terms, other, facil other facilities are get getting better terms. Like uh, there is a, a power generation facility in, in Kachira to get electricity from sugarcane, from the Morasses, from, uh, from yes, sugarcane. And theirs is put on the national grid at 80 cents. Scour is also 80 cents. Isimba, which is hydro, is 18 cents. For us, KCC solid to waste, rather, yes, waste to energy policy, which we have in place, they said it's only 5%. I mean 5 cents. So it was a catastrophe waiting to happen? It was a catastrophe waiting to happen. What explains the reality that to date, KCC is still dumping garbage here? One, want of an alternative. Initially, we had bought 70 acres of land in Kauku there, Kasenge, in Wachiso. 70 acres. But still, we wouldn't construct it there. The area is heavily congested. The population is very big there. And actually, some individuals in KCC passed up that land to themselves in collusion with some residents, and that land went away. Then, we were supposed to go to Dundu. We needed 190 billion. We did not have it. And where I put the blame now on KCC, because I told them I'm going to, app to apportion the blame, oh. the money now allocated for solid waste management in KCC is 4 billion. Initially, it was 3 billion. Annually. Annually. The whole of it would come to Chitez here to maintain Chitez. We said now, as we wait for government to give, give massive interventions in terms of generating electricity, getting the decommissioning funds to, to generate methane gas from here and also constructing a new modern state-of-the-art uh, uh, landfill with the uh, cutting edge technology as we wait for all grandiose plans to be fine, financed oh. let's stave off a catastrophe here by maintaining Chitezi at a ground level let us level these garbage mountains you are seeing here that's, how, that's the reason we have been injecting in 4.1 4, 4 billion you know, you, know, you know what has happened what has been happening that money cannot be accounted for and this is now where, as an institution, we take the blame. And I had Genome 7 talk about investigation, directing the deputy IGG to begin to commence investigation. That is the direction we should be taking. Who is responsible for this 4.1 billion? I'll tell you, if you, your cameras would move around now, it is raining. There is a truck that belongs to one Rumala of Nippons, which had been hired every day here to grade, to level, to level these mountains to zero ground at 2.6 million Uganda shillings every day, every day. Mr. Numala of Nippon takes 2.5 for that grader. There is an excavator, no 2.6. There is an excavator which has also been hired at 2.5 million. There is also another one which is used during emergency situations and heavy rains like this case. That one would also be hired at 2.5 every time it was brought here. Every year, because for you to to you approve this listen, budget? listen, I will come to that. Ooh. Every year, no, because for you to level this uh, garbage, you need maram. This money budgeted for maram every year is 1.5 billion for maram. But the maram they have been using is just excavated from the plot of land, four acres we bought here as an extension. Because initially this was the 36 acres. When to go to food and we were waiting for those alternative me measures. We bought an extension of six acres, four acres here to make it 40, for, for, uh, 40 acres. It is that madam they have been excavating and scooping, bringing here, and then they deceive Ugandans that we are spending 1.5 billion to purchase madam. So this is why we are saying it's, this is criminal negligence. And that's why we should treat it as a matter of crime, uh, not only indolence, not only recklessness or negligence, but a matter. We, uh, we are certain individuals are criminally culpable. This is what I'm saying. For us, is ours has been oversight. You are asking that we have been appropriate. Yes, we, have, we do the appropriation and then we do the oversight. Mm. And it's the reason we have called to account many of these people. Time and again, even this month, this year, January, we were here. 
And we have had the second meeting. I will share with you minutes of the executive meetings where we have called for tough action against the individuals who are responsible for this money. Well, as we stand, uh, the look going by the look of things, rescue efforts look rather hampered. Does this suggest to you that KCCA has one put on hold any further disposal of garbage here? And what does this mean now for the cleanliness of the city? When we came here on Saturday, immediate in the wake of this calamity, we had an impromptu meeting. The Minister for Disaster Preparedness, Honorable Lydia Nabao, was around. The Deputy Executive Director, Engineer Wimbas, was around. Our Director, Public Health, was around here, Dr. Daniel Okero, and a couple of other technical officers. And eventually, actually, the EDSF, Madam Chisaka, joined us. We took a decision by consensus, no more dumping here. Yes, it's not the official decommissioning, because decommissioning is a process and scientific, but at least halt any further dumping of garbage here. They wanted to, they sounded the cages, some of them, Mr. In, particularly engineer Wimbas was, was saying that, look, what are we going to do? We have no choice. But I told them, let us not be, let us not be insensitive to our people here who are suffering. And two, let us not cause any calamity, any further calamity. We are here, I'm not certain about our safety here, Simon. You can see those mountains. And it is heavy. I mean, the downpour is heavy. Anytime this dirty heap can descend on us and it will be buried here. And that's why you said no more dumping here. You'll be causing a catastrophe. So what did we do? We looked for alternatives. We said, do we go to Dundu? I was there yesterday. They are up in arms led by their area MP on Alebochuanika. Now we have talked to the people of Wachiso to say probably we go to, to, to Nkumba. Nkumba they are saying it's just 14, 14 acres. Can you imagine the 36 acres are full? You can call it a photo with the extension of four. Nkumba is only 14 acres. And they are saying the whole of Wachiso, all those municipalities, be, before this incident, Chira municipality was dumping here. Much in the suburb of dumping here. Kasanga T and what not sub county. So all these ones have now to go to Nkumba. So Nkumba, they are also worried. They are saying, no, 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 don't come. We are exploring the possibilities of going to Chengira and talking to Walukaga Mayor Walukaga because there's also some small dump site there. And a number of other people have approached us. But the crisis is not waiting for us. There is a lot of procrastination on the part of General 7 and his team. Kampala generates roughly 2,500 tons of garbage every day. And please don't quote me right. Don't rely on people who give you false information. You, in you in the media, you have been putting it at 1,500 tons every day. No, I have it on good record. It is 2,500 tons every day. So Saturday, 2,500 tons were not ferried here. Anyway, we, we have been collecting half of that. 56% of that with all these concessionaires, Nabugabo Home Kirin and what those private companies and our fleet, which is depleted. We have been collecting just 56%. But even what we have been collecting from Saturday, it is piling up in the city. So this is a catastrophe caused by the city where you are the hell. But this is what I'm saying. What is my role? And what I've explained here exonerates me. If you believe in what I'm saying, it exonerates me that I've been, I've not been indolent, I've been vigilant in pursuing this matter. I've always raised the red flag. I don't deal with the actual funding and the handling of finances. I wish I had the powers to spend cases here, buddy. You would see miracles here. Are you aware of another looming catastrophe? We've had signals that uh, another mountain could descend shortly. Let me tell you, the, the, you see, the mountains of garbage you see here the compacting which ought to have at least caused some glue there grip there so that it is intact and it's not susceptible to anything like a, a garbage slide or something they have done so they work so i i i i will not i won't be surprised if those huge mountains also give way i won't be surprised if they give way and end up uh, as we sign up lord mayor who would be the first person to take liability? Because you seem to be drawing on institutional liability, not personal. If you want to 
a portion personal liability. It starts with General Museveni. He took over management of the city. He said Kampala shall be managed by the center. And it's the reason he appointed all these so many leaders in Kampala. He has two ministers in Kampala. Where are they and what have they been doing? He has the executive director and the ten directors. All of them appointed by him. He has six RCs appointed by him. What have they been doing? At least personally, I can account for what I've been doing. The oversight. Okay, that's the that's the technical that that's the president now. Technically, 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 and institutionally, mm. KCCA is is responsible for the four billion I've said, and they are individuals. I don't want to point out to names here, but I'm asking the IGG. Don't take this matter lightly. I have enough evidence to pin particular individuals. I have record. At one time, I want. I even made a recommendation to KCCA Council. I will give you a record for a particular individual to be sacked with a disgrace from KCCA. I'm on record, and that gentleman was spared in council, and is responsible. Is one of them who is responsible? Is that the director of public health? This is. I, I told you I will not mention names here, but I want the IGG to come. And we give evidence about particular individuals who should be behind the bars right now. Whether women or men or ministers or what, I know there are individuals who should be behind the bars right now. That's possible. And I told them, actually I told some of them here, that you, 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 you have people's blood here on your hands. You are responsible. I even asked some of them, how do you even get sleep when so many lives have been lost here under your watch? And, and you are directly and squarely responsible for this. Time and again, we are accused of just yapping, lamenting, shouting, politicking. Is this yapping? Is this shouting? Is this politicking? When people are dying here, and we have been saying this, we are not being listened to. Well, Kampala Lord Mayor, um, I was able to sneak into um, a short distance from the area where the uh, tragedy fell. And apparently, as rescue efforts continue, uh, to my surprise, on the other side of the mountain, it's business as usual. People are going about picking, picking, uh, picking uh, empty bottles and uh, picking uh, uh, buvera from, 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 from garbage. That's the situation at the moment. Uh, what I've gathered from impeccable sources is that... Uh, uh, victims of this catastrophe are buried 25 feet beneath the surface. How far can the rescue efforts go? Well, we are pitching camp here. Come rain, come sunshine. See, I'm ready for duty. We'll be here to keep you posted on everything as it happens in real time. I want to take you now to Afro Mobile where the police presser is happening. Good morning. Provide 